Rich, thank you for coming, Rich, and um, joining us at 6.30 at night here. Um, I think, and you can certainly talk about whatever <coughs> is on your mind. Um, I know the two things that we wanted to talk to you about was um, our calendar, and I, and I threw those dates at you to make sure that that worked and worked for building use and if there's any major conflicts with any um, projects going on this year. Um, and then I know um, you want to talk about building use policy. That was big on my agenda in that, you know, we'd really love to see the school open up, especially on the weekends. And um, one of the things that we have talked about as a committee is with the possibility, we're all crossing our fingers, of hiring a rec director coming up, that maybe that will make a town employee have better access to the building on the weekends um, for programming. So um, if you wanted to kind of start there, and then we can go on from other things. <laughs> I know there was a, at the beginning of the year, we had a, um, I don't know if it was a conference, I don't want to call it that, but kind of um, unsure bathroom um, responsibilities, like as far as cleaning and, and emptying that trash and stuff like that. I know part of our, part of the summer staff wasn't sure if that was on their list of things or if that's on um, custodial things. want to make sure that we all, you know, understand what we're supposed to be doing on a daily basis and not. I mean, the custodians go in and clean the bathrooms, okay. but if there's like daily stuff that it should get cleaned right away, they can't stop their heavy duty projects, but they can provide things for them to you know, go in. You know, like if there's a clogged toilet, then they'll stop and go get it done. Mm -hmm. But if it's simple things. <laughs> well, I, 
done it, a rec director could do it. Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. You've done what? <laughs> So is that so? Did, um, I don't know what the exact. I have a is. calendar in front of me. So the the Friday, the last Friday in July is the thirty first. Okay. And then um, that first week of August, the Friday is the seventh. So. And then the then the fall, then we have one more week after that. So. Right. Um, so it's they're out on the thirty first. That gives Dick a couple of days to clean the room, and she doesn't. They're going to school of, right till the twenty third, right? I called Allison. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that was correct. No more snow days. No more snow days. Yeah. Why? And Why? we're starting earlier because of where Labor Day Labor falls Day, and yeah. how their contract work and stuff. It's, yeah, you're cutting the week off of one end and starting the week earlier than the other. Yeah. Do you have to make up that day that you? Wasn't it a power outage or something? The, the first one that you had off? It was a power outage. Do you I have think to make that up? Yes. You do? Yeah. Did you know about the transfer of time? Yeah. I was just hoping. <laughs> I think if um, we have multiple more snow days, that he might be able to petition the city. But we've only had four, so. Mm -hmm. Those are the candidates related to Florida at summer. <laughs> For an extra day to, for setup time before camp started, do you know, <coughs> do you know that? Yes. That. yes that so that. just confirm. I would confirm right here. You want there? Since we're there. Yeah. Sorry. Um, we're not. You know, I don't. We're not sure of that date yet. And Lori came in that day, right? For setup, of course. No, I was not around that day for setup. But typically, I could. I just wasn't there. Like. Do you remember when it was? Was it? Didn't, weren't you there for setup? The Sunday. I stopped in. It's it's it usually the Sunday, Sunday before. Yeah. Um, once we had 
you can actually have somebody on staff, whoever the director is, just have them contact and we'll figure that out. Okay. Yeah. Because that, I think, worked out okay last year. I was looking around, but I didn't hear that it was going to work out. No, it was fine. guys, I know Kelly had mentioned something to me about liability stuff, and you were concerned after last year about some liability things. Is that more on your end or our end? Our end. Okay. I mean, as the town. Okay. Because it's on our insurance. It just doesn't make sure we have stuff in writing. The rules. Of, okay. you know, it's not any particular situation. It's just in, in general. general. So we want to just make sure that we get things in writing. And people understand what their rules are and, and okay. the responsibilities. But what, there, I don't believe it was anything to do with school, yeah. right, guys? Mm -hmm. Except for that. Yeah. Okay. No, but there is something in there now that says that the, well, the campers and staff have to be respectful of school property. And oh, of course. That yeah. they have to pay restitution for damages and stuff like that. So now it's legally covered and written. Well, I'm not sure it's been written before. No, not that I'm aware of. In the previous years, we've heard about damages. Yeah, a, wa a long time ago. Okay. Before this group? Yes. Okay. In the last two years, I don't remember. No, no I don't think it's, it, yeah. it was, it's been a while. Okay. Just trying to correct the slide. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So the second piece you wanted to talk to me about was the community use. So I'm the wrong person. But I brought a few copies of the policy. Um, I think that's the best place to start so yeah. that we know what, what we're... So let me, I can explain the policy. Um, if you go to the second page. Um, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and get the copy. All right, I'm um, right number three is where it talks about supervision. So the sponsoring organizations are supposed to provide sufficient and competent adults, and the adult must be at least 21 years of age, um, and reside in Rollinsburg. <laughs> but I, I think because of the rec program and being able to hire a, an appropriate person mm -hmm. that the board is okay with that. They would that, waive that yeah. particular, okay. Yeah, because essentially you guys are the overseers and you all live in Rollinsburg. You're the committee for you. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, and then supervision, that hasn't been a problem, I don't think, on our part. So it says the school district may require that a school employee be present at all times when the facility is being used. So for me, if there's not a school employee, I can't sign off on this because if I do, no school employee and something happens, then my liability kicks in too because I've approved it. Um, what's happened in other districts that I've worked for, most districts have that now um, for insurance reasons just because of things that happen in schools. Um, but I've been at a couple of districts where the principal has denied a request because no school employee was available, superintendent denied, and then the uh, party petitioned the board. And a couple of times the board approved it, which is fine because then it's off of the administrator's liability. And the board is saying, as taxpayers of the town, we are okay with this. Um, I can say that there's been an example of that. just caution you <laughs> on that mm -hmm. request because you're putting the school board in a position of, you know, they want to support people coming in, they really do, but they're also in a position of liability if something happens without a school employee. And even with an employee there, something could happen and, you know, liability kicks in, but 
So why you're, would we be covered though under our liability insurance? <laughs> you, you are, but I'm trying to think of a specific example. Um, I've got one. Before your time at the school, I did not have sufficient liability coverage when you were allowed to be there on a weekend and heaven forbid somebody had gotten hurt, I would have had to come up with the difference between my liability and the school's liability insurance if somebody had gotten hurt. But that was a, but that's a single like that would be you as opposed to what we're trying to do is is really use the school as a community building, yeah. right, which it really needs to be rich. Like yeah. and you know, um I know in that study that they did in 2015, you know, I, I went through that briefly, and you know, one of the biggest things they talked about was the baby boomers and feeling like they had a sense of where their money was going in this, you know, yeah. in this town, and you know, I think it's a shame that that really sits empty all weekend, and you know, we clearly have we have people who want to do stuff. You know, the soccer program seems to be great. The adult basketball thing is going well. You know, if we can start doing some stuff for seniors on the weekends and, yeah. um, you know, that's that's really what, you know, that's really what we're thinking as far as building use. It's, um, and, I, and I would think we would be covered under that as far as our liability, right? Yes, Lynn? <laughs> um, I wonder if it's... Um, maybe a question for the school board about what their liability concerns are and given that we have the same insurance coverage because we're the you know we have the same carrier um if that doesn't alleviate their concerns or else you know i'm, I'm not saying that they have concerns well well i, I, I think it's valid to, to have concerns about this at all. well understood but you know it's it's valid to have concerns that can happen yeah. when nobody's there. Yeah. Um, but to the point about us having insurance coverage, you know, we have insurance coverage that individual persons wouldn't have because we're an organization. So I wonder if having that level of insurance that is not private individual insurance would take care of whatever their concerns could potentially be. So a model that has worked in another school and the board has I'm also wondering if uh, part of that is not just liability, but cleaning up, and because I know that was issued years ago, where custodial staff would come in and things were not clean. Yes, when they come in Monday morning and it's not yes, clean. Yes, and, that's and lights being yeah. left on because people don't know where the light switches are, because yeah. you used to have to use the uh, electrical panel behind the mats on the wall, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm wondering if part of it's not that too, just making sure whoever is in charge knows what they have to do. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because before everything was a key, so you had to go around and make sure, you know. Yeah, so it could be some of their. Yeah.
don't know yet. So we can um, work that out for sure. But and even if it's not a school play, because of that it. relationship. Yes. Because it's not just going to be, you know, the, the summer anymore. It's going to be a part-time year-round art director, but we're proposing. So it's going to be someone hopefully that will stick around and be very active and keep our families and children and seniors active. goes to the board yeah. and presents our proposal. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got his hands tied because it's the rules of the school dictated by the board of the school board. So we, if it doesn't go forward, we'll go forward to the school board and see what we can get for permissions. I mean, and I think they're, they're just as willing to, you know, allow people who refuse to, you know, they're going to be told by the superintendent, you know, your policies in place for liability reasons and we need to ensure difficult part is if, you know, if it's not a board member mm -hmm. and it's, well, this parent wants to volunteer to do this activity and this parent wants to volunteer to do that activity, that does not work. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen it handed off where this parent is sick or can't get out of work, so they're handing off to the second parent and that parent hasn't been, you know, done a walk through the building. Mm -hmm. They might be a trustworthy person, but more often than not, I've seen in that model, if we don't know who's in charge, who's in the building, <coughs> that's when things fall apart. So, yeah. so I think for you folks, the same idea, it would be consistent. Well, fingers crossed you'll have fingers a record. Crossed. Yeah, exactly. Because I think that'll be easier for mm -hmm. you to sell yeah. the board. Is there anything that you need from us for going forward with anything? Um, does anybody else have any questions for Rich? What we have I have here? one question that I just thought of that I thought you were going to bring up, but and then you went in a different direction. <laughs> um, is there a preventative D ish something? Mm -hmm. um, hopefully. started with a small group of parents saying, you know, we need to upgrade our structures, and it sort of exploded into a five-project uh, project. <laughs> project. Um, and one of them is to improve the field area, specifically the infield, and we're moving that entire infield and putting in new um, material and hoping in the morning for days in a row and it, they just keep coming back. And I know Dick gets oh, frustrated geez. when you ask him about it. So I was just wondering if there was anything. Well, he gets frustrated because it takes them away from yeah. the work that they have. I know. And do you think he's frustrated last year? He waited until like eight weeks instead of ten weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he's just... So I'm hoping um, we're writing a Say, do you know if that is going to happen? 
this year, or is that still? I don't of, know. Yeah. I don't know. So if it, let's say it doesn't happen. Let's say worst case scenario, it's what we have. Um, what he and I talked about last year was getting out there earlier, before school's even out, and dosing it. The school is an isolated by this. It, it, this town has this big time. I've last noticed year. that because yeah. I run around here and uh, I, you can see cautiously. Yeah, I mean, it was all over the place in town, down in Eugene as well. And, you know, we noticed that when we were doing um, our family stuff down there. And, and it just seems to be a, it was a really bad year for it. Hopefully, it's not as bad, but no, you still us, have to it's be. Been two years. It's been two years, right? For us, yeah. yeah. At least, I don't know. What the it's word. happened in the past, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we, it's all new. this group's also been tasked with looking into grants, and one of the grants I looked at was Target is um, teaming up with the National Soccer Association to put in a hundred new youth soccer fields around the country. And so, they are sharing the burden of the cost. So that would be something to look into if you wanted a funding option. Right now we're looking at a grant uh, for a company to come in and do a community service project, which would include them purchasing the material as well. Um, I'm not sure when they make the decision. Mike Robin would hopefully have that information. But the due date is Valentine's Day. So Assuming by early March, we'll know if we've been approved because it's a spring project, it's mm -hmm. a spring target date. So, can you not talk enough for the goals that are out there? Things have been vacant for the last couple of years. I have no idea. Um, we did. <laughs> yes, uh, we have a student council working on some fundraising plans for bases, some good bases that we can use, but. That's something that you guys don't have. We'll, this, maybe we'll let you guys use that too. Um, and kids have brought up the soccer nets, and it's one of the things that I'd like, if there's time, is for them to get those goalposts painted. I think we had a couple of um, young fifth grade boys who see me up you know, getting nets <laughs> so that they didn't have to chase the ball when it, they scored goals. <laughs> They're fast. They can <laughs> score. <laughs> Chad, it was really, it was, we were sitting in that his teacher, it was in his, he was in his teacher conference with me, and he said, I wanted to join student council so that we could raise money to buy new nets. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Yeah. We also have two nets that are not being used in our training. But those are, are you talking to replace his or just to use them? I don't use think, them. I don't, I've been in our shed, I, I don't see any. Uh, no, we have the rec, the rec shed, the blue rec shed. We got them from Dix as part of a grant. They're portable, so you can use them. Oh, oh, they're oh, so small. And everything. It's yeah. Not just, yeah. So they're not the regulation size. Right? But so, Rich, and uh, this is kind of, I don't know. It, is that really a fundraising thing that we need to do for the kids, or is that a school responsibility? Because same thing with the outdoor basketball hoops out there. The the nets are gone there, so. I mean, what are those? Like twenty bucks a piece? You know, who isn't there yeah, money be. in our I funding? Oh, I don't know. I Have don't they been replaced? Last time I drove over there, it wasn't. They, were, they, I were, thought they were both there. down. But um, ideally, it's a budget issue that we should be putting in the budget. <laughs> Can we do that now? Yeah, it's <laughs> too late. If only it were that simple. I know. But they've been. Been gone for two years, yeah. so that's frustrating. Yeah. I, I'm only in my nineteenth month, <laughs> and I'm starting to realize some things that we really should have. Um, and the playground is really sort of reared its head this year because kids use it all the time. I know, all mm -hmm. the time. Does anybody remember, Lori? Do you remember when that playground was redone? Yes, how, it how was done was in nineteen. 
was the weekend we moved in. Wow. Well, no, no, no. No. Yeah. No, 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 89. That was Trevor. 99. <laughs> Sorry. 99. That sounds a little bit more okay. like it. That sounds closer. But still, yeah. that's 20 years. Somewhere around there. Because sure. it was the weekend we moved in. And it used to have a slide, like, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, oh, yeah, the slide that Doug fell off of and broke his arm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is that why? Is oh, it? that wasn't why it was gone. But <laughs> it was non-regulation, and there were many kids who got hurt on that slide. It was ancient. Yeah. So there were no sides. You know, when you climb up, there was nothing. He didn't fall there. He fell going down. Yeah, I heard off of the wheels. So. Yeah, a lot of kids have gotten hurt. Yeah. yeah, we'll keep picking away at things. Well, I can't yeah. make it all happen at once. What about the pavilion? We <laughs> loved your idea last year about the pavilion. That is actually one of the five things Ooh. on our playground nice. committee's agenda. Um, and the board actually brought it up during one of their budget sessions this fall. They really like that idea because it's a multi-purpose, multi-use idea, um, and there's a perfect spot for it. And where are you gonna put it? Um, up on the hill behind the ball field, so the it little hill, back around. Yeah, like where kindergarten. Like yeah, there yep. it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but that way, if the field is redone mm -hmm. and families come and do a birthday party, they yeah. don't need, yeah. you know, because Go play on the game. weekend, mm -hmm. you know, just come to the pavilion and use the picnic tables and <coughs> play on the field. And that would be great. Yeah. yeah. It's a great idea. So, it's not, <coughs> you know, our first priority, but it's on there, and I think with the board, you know, being supportive of that, you know, maybe they'll figure out a way to help us out with it, make it happen sooner rather than later. Won't be this summer. <coughs>
about whatever you <coughs> found out for grant stuff? Um, so I reached out to Ryan Hart, who works for DF Richard. I didn't hear back from him yet, but I kind of just basically said what we're doing. Um, and then I did go on to Dick's, and it looks like we need to create an account. Um, do we have an account there? And then um, I looked at Lonza. They do a lot of sponsorships. They didn't mention any grants. It looks like they do a lot of international. But I did find an, um, an email address, so I can reach out to them. Um, it also looks like Target and Dix, they start in February and issue grants the break of May. So I think that that's something that we might still have a week or two to kind of compile this. I just have lists, but you see still in my notebook and I couldn't find my sheet. So I'll get that momentarily and <laughs> email that out. But just as far as I was trying to compile a list of places to walk into, places to email, um, things like that. And again, I, I looked at Citizens Bank and it doesn't look like they qualify. They want either financial management, well, we, can, we can supply that if they want it. Like, as far as like offering that to our programs? Our, well, so the town's financial management letter, I don't know that it's going to help, you mm -hmm. know, but if they require it, just know that, you know, we're audited every year, and as part of that, the auditor provides a management letter, Oh, which is like a summary of... Okay, projects. I interpreted that they wanted to fund a program that that was offering some type of financial education rather oh, than... Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Okay, sorry. So I went through all of the ones that we've looked at in the past mm -hmm. and some of the ones we discussed last week. Newbury Tort Savings Bank, uh, there's a bunch of banks that I went through, has donated to us in the past. Mm -hmm. and done, they donated to us in 2018. And um, there are forms on their website that you have to send it to them by regular mail. Citizens, I looked at. Um, Do you think that we met the criteria? It doesn't seem like it's not a... I, my spreadsheet didn't come out the way I wanted it to, mm -hmm. but I put like what was, whether we qualified or we didn't qualify, like qualifying factors or disqualifying factors. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I did know that citizens, is you have to apply online and they'll send you stuff by email if you qualify. TV Bank of North, um, you have to apply online. Um, First Sea Coast Bank, um, you have to contact the grant person. Kenny Bunk's um, Savings Bank, we can apply. They say mainly Kenny Bunk County, but they just gave $75,000 to the Elliott Library in Elliott, Maine. So there's an opportunity there. Um, Eastern Bank. Um, they're based out of Massachusetts, but um, they have um, applications on their website and they hit certain criteria. Optima Bank is now Cambridge Trust and we previously applied to them twice and we never got accepted. Holy Rosary um, Credit Union, we have to reach out to their person. Northeast Credit <coughs> Union, um, we have to reach out to them too. Um, and then People's um, Bank has two different ones. They have their bank gives out a grant, and then they have a foundation that gives out a grant. The Bank of New Hampshire, Profile Bank, and Bank of America. Um, and so um, a lot of them you have to apply online, and you, um, like, but Profile Bank, you send them a email regarding what we're looking for, and they'll accept it or deny it. Um, Celia, did you reach out to Federal Savings? Um, Federal Savings is now First Seacoast. Yeah. First Seacoast, right. Yeah. Did you mention them? I mm -hmm. missed it. Yep. Oh, all right, sorry. So, okay. um, because I just think where they're small and local that maybe you have a better shot with them than somebody First Seacoast Bay, yeah, I agree. They have, a, they have a contact person, uh, Tiffany Lance. I think that would be a good, um, just like I said, because they're small and local. That and Holy Rosary, because they're also small and local, mm -hmm. um, might and be better than the bigger ones. And Optima is based out of, used to be, now that it's Cambridge Trust, used to be based out of Portsmouth. And there was another one. Um, most of them are local. Um, Northeast Credit Union is based out of Portsmouth. So they might be good. And then I did look at stores too. Walmart. 
Um, I looked at them. Target, Home Depot, TJ Maxx, Marshalls and Home Goods, Staples, Dollar Tree, Bed Bath & Beyond, Dick's, Macy's, Michael's, Market Basket, Trader Joe's, Hannaford's, um, Shaw's, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Janato's, PJ's, and Aldi's. Um, we could go to Aldi's. They really focus on like getting the kids out and eating and even helping them with their nephews. Um, Via for sure. I just looked at their community website page. I didn't talk to anybody. Um, I put in CMJ bus lines and our person there. Um, and I started to run out of time. So I put on Rogers Auto Body, um, Aroma Joe's, and Dunkin' Donuts because we talked to them before. Um, but I, my spreadsheet didn't come up the way I wanted it to when I printed it. But it's like I put in the deadlines. So like some of them we have to do 90 days in advance. Some of them are 60 days in advance mm -hmm. to our earliest print date and stuff. And I can send it out, which would be easier than trying to figure out. Um, but like some of them, like you said, aren't there. Like Northeast Credit Union, they're unveiling their awards in the spring. Um, we have to check back at their website to find out what they're doing. Um, one of the people, we would be in cycle two, which would be during March, and we would get a grant decision as of June. Um, and a lot of them said you can only apply for one per year um, and so forth, and that we may not always the larger companies said they get so many requests that they will not be notified if you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And like Dix, um, they wanted, um, they, they need to know 60 days in advance and they'll let you know um, 15 to 30 days before your deadline. Celia, have you ever asked um, what with Greenhouse or Janco? Yes, so we've left letters. Uh, Kathy Rizzoli, when she was on the committee, talked to Wentworth Greenhouses. And I went to Jenko and left a letter and never heard back from them. It might be good if you write a letter, you write it directly to a person. Like they do with yes. Bridget Santos. Yeah, I would customize well, the letter to a specific person that you know is there, like the resident owner. Which for always an other thing. It doesn't work yeah. or if it's the other one. Right, right. it's for Ryan. Again. Well, um, Ryan Wentworth for, for, um, for the greenhouse, right. but I think it's probably Janito's. Yeah. Oh, for Jenko. For Jenko. Yeah. yeah. Just because then it will go directly to him. Because um, they're the ones that are going to the deciding care. factor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Some of these people because I haven't been in town as well, long as on their website it lists them it lists who the who they are and in, in the positions they hold yeah. if it says tomatoes I mean they're they're going to be up there. Um, but I do know like um, a couple of the guys at Janato's market are walls for residents and if you talk to them they'll get right on the ball but then again they put it on their desk and it doesn't go necessarily to the right channels to get the gift card or something. <coughs> My contact at Janina's would be Gary Van Duver, and they, that's yeah. the person, and one of the owners. Um, so he would, yeah, he would be the one that would make that decision. And I've given them to both of the gentlemen that I know there, one being Gary, mm -hmm. and um, then it gets lost in the shuffle or something. And it's one of the ladies that works in the back office that actually comes out and gives you the gift card. So if Gary forgets to give it to him or puts it down somewhere, mm -hmm. oh, I'll get right on that. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of stuff we're dealing with. So, so maybe it's worth, um, sorry, I don't mean to hijack the conversation. I'm just having a thought that, you know, because it sounds like there's a lot of potential follow-up with some of these, particularly the local ones, um, to delegate that as a separate responsibility or split up the people so that everybody's got follow through on the certain, you know, organizations that they're gonna reach out to. 
No, but I mean, it's just since you have such a comprehensive list that I'm happy to take a section of it and yeah. work with yeah. a certain, so then we're not kind of yeah, doing the same duplicating thing. efforts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe you and I should sit down and sure. look at the list. Mm-hmm. And because I know you work in the Portsmouth area mm-hmm. and like Dunkin' Donuts a couple years ago gave us a grant or a donation of $250, but their corporate office is in Hampton. I actually work in Hampton, so, yeah, so <laughs> maybe going to, mm-hmm. like, you doing some of the Portsmouth Absolutely. ones would be I'm better. Do that. So my only thought on this whole thing when I was looking at this letter, that I was thinking more of a letter. Like, this is a great info brochure, mm-hmm. but it's not that personalized letter. Like, if you're going into a bank or into Janetto's, like, mm-hmm. it would be nice to say, Here's the letter. It's from the town of Romsford. Like the town of Romsford isn't even on here anywhere. It doesn't say this program is run by the town of Romsford. It just looks like, hey, this is could be some camp run by some private citizen. Mm-hmm. So like I, I, I was thinking like we could maybe put together a letter from the town of Romsford rec committee. Here's our goal with this camp. Here's what we're looking to do, and here's our ask. Because I don't see that anywhere on here. I mean, this is a great info letter. It's it's excellent. It's got a lot of detail on it. But if you put this in front of somebody who's really busy, they're going to put it down their desk and they can go back to their work and they can forget about it. Whereas if you make that connection, they're immediately like, oh, the town of Romsford is supposed to be something. I live in Romsford. I want to help support this. That's that's my only two cents yeah. on the letter. I think it's a great idea. Like, it, mm-hmm. A short letter. Yep. And then put yep. this as a second page. Because this, yep. this two page thing says the same thing on both pages, as far right. as I can tell. So yep. we could cut that down to one and have one of those pages as a second page of a letter to. That was how, how do you feel about composing that such a letter? I would love to compose that letter. <laughs> be great. All right, I'm gonna put that down okay. in my notebook. Fantastic. Mike. But I don't want us to slow us down because I think you know what we're already doing. We can still use this and you know compose on. Well, this no, but this is great. Just we could change the only concern or whatever, and then you know, kind of we can still put a little personal you know, email attachment or whatever. If it's and maybe the logo or something that makes it look kind of official, like you know, you can use town letterhead, but something, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, yeah, little yeah. Little yeah. Little I haven't read it. I haven't looked at it. We so. can make that logo bigger. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great idea to have a letter. Um, this we also need for some of the grants and other things that we're going after. They're asking for our funding options or marketing materials. Sure. So this is more like. Like you're saying, it's not a personalized letter. Say, look at me. This is our marketing, more mar- maybe marketing material. And I guess the two points on it that I would suggest that we need to look at before we pass it is: Are we good with all the numbers on it? Since we're changing tuition, do the numbers need to change? And then um, I added the two big changes. Is Camp Raleigh Friends that used to be the teen uh, sponsor teen camper and um, then sponsor a trip so that if somebody wanted to give us money to, to upgrade an activity we're going on. Like I was looking at our list of activities that's on the drive and one of them is to go to the uh, uh, planetarium in Concord. We can get the kids in for $12 but it's an extra $5 per kid to go to the movie there. So if they want to pay an extra $200 to enhance that. Or it might be even something that you're not already scheduling. Right. But if you know you didn't even think of the planetarium, then maybe they can fund the whole idea of the planetarium or something else that you haven't conceived of yet. So and that there's like a surprise bonus for kids that this kind of field trip. Or if we have, like we haven't had in the past where um, they've got water issues on somewhere and the water goes down at the school, we have to that would be a good time to use like a surprise trip or something. So those were the two new I think my my only suggestion is if to avoid using the word may concern or try to get a, a name. Right. Because yes. I think it makes it more personal. Yeah, that's right. Like and they don't know who I am and they're sending me that person. Yes. 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 Um, I just think that it makes it that you research their company it. and it personalizes mm-hmm. it. So I would try to do that as much as you possibly can. Right. Um, so, and I think that's probably the one thing that I had commented on my paper at home 
was about the sponsor camper, which goes back to us figuring out our our prices. And, uh, uh, and I and I've done some research. I'm all over the place with prices, so <laughs> I called the works and to have my two 11 year old boys there for their eight week session is going to cost four grand. So. Sign them up. <laughs> So I chuckled when they told me that one. Um, and, and, I don't, and I don't know if we want to go over all this, because I want to go through our booklets is what we really need to do. But in order, do we think that we're going to get this stuff out? I mean, if Mike's going to do a letter, we can, I, I would rather put that on hold, our tuition amounts right now, because Well, we can just maybe take out that sponsor or camper and leave it to be determined for right now. I just have one comment about that, which is that um, for the past couple of years, we have received more people. We don't have a mechanism for knowing who might qualify for a scholarship. We rely on the people who come forward and ask for one. And we've been in a position more than once that we've received funds and don't have somebody to give it to. Um, and then those, refund, those funds are restricted for that purpose. So you can't, re, you, know, you can't buy playground equipment with scholarship money. So um, I would caution you either about getting hand tied with money that you can't use or um, finding a way to, you know, have the school anonymously put something in the backpacks of the kids who qualify for free and reduced lunch or something, you know, I don't know. No. But you don't want to like flood yourself with applications that you're not going to be able to meet either. So it's just this funny. I was thinking about a similar thing when I saw that first one about sponsor campers. Like, how do you decide? Like, so, you know, it seems very generic. Like you get, say, one person gets $350, but you have six people who are eligible. So how do you go about deciding? It's something that really we need a policy about. You need to have something in writing that says, you know, for a family of however many, you know, or, or the poverty line, we, we, you know, if you are, you know, 150% of the poverty line, or, or you have to have some kind of measure that we don't have. There's nothing in writing about it. So we in did, though, and it's in one of our meeting minutes from a couple of years ago, 2017. Um, we voted that it had to be a Wallensburg resident and that they had to fall at a certain range below the poverty level. That should be somewhere like out loud as a policy rather than just in the minutes so that we all know that it exists and can follow it. Um, but we also and evaluate it. But we also, the board of selectmen is the one to make the decision right, on it. Yeah. Caroline, and, uh, as well as our director and the board of selectmen, make those decisions on who qualifies and who doesn't and grants it based on that. So um, it's worked out pretty well that we've had you know, more or less the money has matched the number of qualified applicants. Mm -hmm. um, so if you change what we're doing, then you're going to, you know, upset that ratio potentially. But also, we've had sometimes too much money. So it's a funny conundrum that, you know, it's too bad that people who just raise their hand will get an opportunity that people who are not aware of the opportunity won't get a shot at. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is but, there you know, a way to word it so doesn't necessarily have to be sponsor camper, but we could use the money towards that. And the need to how about we write? How do we what do you change do it, it to? Well, I mean, is there a way to? So I mean, it's assistance. limiting us if they. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm understanding correctly, limiting us on using it if they say that that's what it's for. If but is there a, a way to make it a little broader? So if we could use it for something else, but we could also choose to. What would be really great is if there's a form that says, name of the organization, we're agreeing to donate this much money, and then you check the box for, like, game supplies, arts and crafts, mm -hmm. sponsor a camper, and another X that you can use it for whatever you want. Um, but that way, you, whatever, it's not just a, a sponsor a camper, but whatever people donate the money for, you're bound to that purpose. Right. So... We just have to be careful about that with all donations. Mm -hmm. But I think if it, it's if it's clear on a form that you know they've said we can use it for anything, then we at least know yay we can use it for anything. But it would help us keep track of how what comes in for money and how restricted it is, and they're signing off on the intent of the funds. Instead of sponsor camper, it could just be 
across the systems or tuition systems, something so that it doesn't have to be all for one. You know, you could spread it out among three or four different people. Yeah, but we also scholars. don't have a mechanism. If you've got ten people who qualified and two scholarships, you don't have a way to. If they all qualified, we don't really have a way to decide who gets to go. But, first term, first but week, was it? Or, or we did it last yeah. time? Or you could take what the amount of money you have and divide it equally across whoever qualifies. And, and hope that that and helps anybody out. enough. Well, yeah. it, it has to. I mean, that would be the only fair way that you could do it, if they're all in the same position financially. Or you could raffle it. Or, or you could or do could first come, first you know, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just something to think about, that there's yeah. no, we don't have anything to figure that out right now. Because so, it does kind of lead people to think that they have to choose what they want the money to go towards, but we could have a where are you going to get needs yes, or something? that would maybe be that a would great be, box to check. Mm -hmm. The needs of the camp. Maybe that could go first, because maybe, you know, there will yes, be like all the that. Yeah. Well, which could, like, maybe, could say, maybe like, we okay. should just take off all of that and <laughs> and make it that broad spectrum of... You say, like, by donating funds, you, you can yes. cover the following. Yes, okay. exactly. If you look at the Police Benevolent Association's letter, they, they do a nice job of you know, in the past we've helped these, or you know, we've done these things, we've donated funds. Your your funds would be used for, you know, potentially supporting these organizations or doing these things. So you don't really get to tell. I mean, you could certainly like write on your check, this is only for that, mm -hmm. and they would have to, you know, respect that. But but the way they've written the letter, if you're donating to them, it's presumed that you're allowing them to use it for any one of the purposes they've said in the letter. Yeah, and that makes it very general because then yes. you could use it for anything versus having it be these are the things, you know, like sponsoring their donation. Or just leave it as generic as possible with your possible needs and then not having it. Did you already write a letter? <laughs> so could we, if he's going to write a letter, <laughs> could we just, I don't know, I'm saying maybe we take out the titles and say, Maybe it's the same thing you just said. These are the things that it goes to. Maybe the letter can incorporate, like, kind of basically say we're a community run, you know, what program and your generous donation will go towards. Yeah, donations you know. in the past have, you know, done, had this effect, and mm -hmm. any donation you choose to provide, mm -hmm. you know, may be used for any one of the following. Mm -hmm. That's right. And just leave it at that. Yeah. I think that would be great. It would really make the administration of those things simpler. I think it would free up the camp. Well, for right. It would allow you well, a lot more yeah. flexibility. I think mm -hmm. it's a win-win all around. Mm -hmm. Well, and last year, like way. you had to go back to say, can we use the money for this instead of that? The mm -hmm. last two years, I've gone to the police yes. department, the police benevolence association, because yeah. they've given the max, which is the three fifty, and then they said, I've gone to the chief, and I'm like, can we use it? Okay, max. The, well, for, for the, there is no max. The sponsor. first one. The, the first sponsor. The first sponsor. They could. It's just always. Yeah. But let's remember, though, that, and and I think we just need to make it very generic so it happens. But let's <coughs> also make sure that we do whatever we need to do, and when we put a letter out that we're saying with the funds last year we were able to purchase these items mm -hmm. or do this. Let's make sure that feedback goes out there again says this is what we did with it because the more people see I mean we just don't want it to be turned over to nothing you know we want to make sure, you know I mean or put it to yeah you something you just want a be, movie license well, yeah for rainy days or we don't it, want them to think we're doing it every day right but yes. we purchased a movie license for rainy yeah. day activities yeah. we purchased something the, special that's extra or, that's extra, or trying to replenish yeah. You know things that have been broken, like or yeah. taken or missing or whatever. So, you know, so mm -hmm. four campers that wouldn't have been able to attend were right. were able to, to exactly. Yeah. But knowing that you know you're not held to that, but whatever you did with it, make sure that people know that going forward. Or sending a thank you letter saying for those who are actually giving you donations, this is what we were able to do with it. Thank you. You know, and follow up after the program's over and let them know what you did with the money. Have to get kids with those thank you cards. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's brilliant. two thank mm -hmm. yous, or two invoices came out. Well, a thank you and an invoice was sent out earlier today. And
and we do have a thank you card that matches um, some of our marketing material on the drive mm -hmm. that just has to be printed. Um, but it would be nice if the kids did print mm -hmm. one. And I know some of you did use that picture too. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my question is, is that is the letter Mike's writing going to replace this letter? And do we need two letters? Because some, like grants, requests like a marketing or whatever. Is that what this is, or is that the letter? I think reaching out a letter would be more comfortable than this, mm -hmm. as far as like initiating contact and kind of letting people know where mm -hmm. we're coming from and what we're expecting. But maybe there are companies that need, you know, we need to dictate exactly what the and then we could use that as the supporting document. I just think it's, need to. it's too long and too wordy, to be honest with you. That's my opinion. I think that you just, there's, if they need more information from us, then we can obtain that information exactly what they're asking for versus sending them, you know, sending this. Um, so we have, have to know. For, for right? Some of them have a form, mm -hmm. yep. so you're filling out the form mm -hmm. and then putting the cover letter mm -hmm. on top of that. So it'll mm -hmm. be what they're requesting. And, our and then our letter yeah. saying this is what we've done and yeah. what we want to do. Well, I know, like the banks, they request all of our marketing materials, our um, our list of directors, which would be the committee member or the select board mm -hmm. members, um, and then our budgets and so forth. They have a not only do we have to do the application, but we have to provide them with supplementary material, which is very small things that you can put, you know, on a sheet of paper. I, I just think that this, this is just too long and too wordy that it just, it, you're going to lose it. I think we're talking about two different things. I think if you're applying to a big organization where you have to fill out a form mm -hmm. and they want supplemental materials, mm -hmm. that makes a great supplemental material. But if you're reaching out to a smaller or more local organization, you need a letter that's warm and easy to hear. Yeah. See. And then that could be even a second sheet that has more information, but that the letter is warm and personal and engaging. Yeah. See, I'm, that's what I was trying to figure out. Do we need both or do we just need just one? I think it depends who you're sending it to. I think both, because you can do some in some cases yeah. and some in another, yeah. and out something else in another case. That would be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's being, being left on a desk. The letter followed up with this, you know, yeah. if we need it. And so this needs work, like it sounds like um, we want to take on the places and we don't want to engage ourselves into um, having designated funds as much. Right. You just have levels, just like yeah. you, level, you have you know, $50 at this level, it's the incentive. Gold you know, club, 250, 250 or more. If you if you could send me the word document on that, then I, I can I take it from the hack of that and just try to shorten it a little bit. Make the picture bigger. And then you'd have the same wording in your letter that's on there too. Yeah. So we have a goal, like, I think I can have this letter done, 
you know, within a week's time. Yep. Do we want to meet again before we finalize the letter, or like set a meeting for two weeks from now? Just to we're we're, we're going to need to meet quite frequently so anyway, but I don't know. We have town stuff coming up, too, so. Town stuff really okay. during the week has mostly died down. Isn't there a couple of um, school board is next school board delivered that is that during the week? It's Tuesday, yeah, that's Tuesday. Tuesday next week. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the weekend. The 8th, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. If we gave it two weeks, we'd have a little bit more. Oh, you don't do it on Monday night. night. Right. No Monday night for you. And if you do it in two weeks, there's a new the week after it because vacation. Yeah. Well, two weeks, I was kind of looking at the 12th. Is that something that... Might as well just do this. That's right the now. water sewer hearing. Okay. Not their budget. Oh, that's their public hearing, right? Yeah. So do you do Thursday night instead? It's a school board meeting. I don't know if that matters yeah. to anyone. Okay. I might Tuesday be night that week is free. I might be at the school board meeting asking them about the policy change. <laughs> Which night? The eleventh. What time is that at? Six to seven. And what time, um, Denise? When is the water at? The twelfth. That's what time is that? Um, time is that, Brian? Oh. Six. What time is your six? What? Your water what? meeting. It starts at six thirty. Six thirty. Mm. The public hearing on the budget. Yeah. I thought it was at six. It's posted at six thirty. Open the post oh. office. Mm. And then there's a bond hearing at seven thirty. you that this will be the only Sunday meeting this whole February, March time. Because they have the break comes in, the vacation comes in. If you do it Tuesday the 11th, oh, you can't make Tuesday. I mean, I can. I just might have some little people. And I can't. I can't make Tuesday. You're doing soccer. Yeah, that's soccer, right? Yeah. But you still have five. I can figure it out. One we can have people in the hallway, and you can also, you know, submit the letter maybe. And you know, if you if the goal is meeting frequently, I think you're going to have to struggle with this many people. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, maybe he could just pass on the letter, and you can discuss it. And he doesn't have to be here. I, you know, yeah, though your absolutely. presence is valued. <laughs> but if you send it to it electronically and just get like a 24 hour, you have to get back to us on it and see what you think. And if there's so much difference between everyone who's replying back, then maybe we got to have a meeting, but if not, we're all in agreement. Well, my other concern is how far are we going to get tonight with all these other things? Like, oh, yeah. we, like we really do well, have to meet frequently. Yeah, I'm not doing much more. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, I know. We, I might know, but it is quarter of eight. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, she needs right. To have a so stop time my guess day. is that that we're gonna have to meet frequently anyway because I don't yeah. think we're gonna get all through all of this tonight. Is just my guess. Could we set up a workshop to do? I know you don't want to do this. Well, we could do the twelfth, but you two can't make it, right? What's the twelfth? That's the water. That's Wednesday. That's the water sewer. Um, the rest of us, we could just do the workshop and work on the ladder, right? Because I think that would be a really good way. I'm okay that's with fine. that. Yeah. Are you guys good with that? Yeah. And then can we, um, Celia, could you? So twelfth. Um, so let's look at the twelfth. So we'll. We'll come in on the 12th, rec meeting. Six, 6.30, okay with everybody here? On when? For that 12th? Yeah. Okay. And the, that's, the water is down at the Legion, right? Yep. We know. Yeah. Okay. Well, how are they going to get in? Can we meet somewhere else? Can we meet at the pool? Do we have to ask um, permission at the library? You can check to see if the library is open, but yeah. I don't, you know. Isn't it open on Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday night. I, I can email Sarah. As long as you can get in there before they close, they can lock the door and leave you in it usually. Yeah. So Thank let's you. let's write that in the library just for now and we'll let everybody know if that works. For the meeting on the twelfth. Yeah. Okay. And then what about um is there At what time did you say? Six thirty. Does anybody have a conflict the two weeks after that? It's Ash Wednesday. I don't want to what, what date is that? That would be the 26th. So it's a week after vacation. I can't do the 22nd. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Wednesday. Wednesday. There's nothing on the yeah. calendar. Okay, for that. so let's put that in there too for now. 6.30? Yeah. And that town hall? Yeah. Um, we can push them together. All right, well, at least we took care of that business. Can I just say one thing before we get involved in all this? Yes. I saw pictures on Facebook of soccer. And I know you don't, this is the first time you've done this, but this is like my pet peeve. Sure. They cannot sit on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> because they inevitably lean against the curtain and it bends the curtain and then it can't be opened or closed or it breaks and can't be used at all. And that's a classroom. That is easy. And I there see, are signs. I saw the signs up there, and there are signs, no and problem. the kids should all know that from there were the pictures on there. There were. Well, I no have them right at my phone. Because <laughs> that's, that's easy. Yeah. There's a mom that. that took them, right? Yeah. Because yeah, I'm friends with her too. Yeah. I don't my know. wife was policing that last night diligently. Oh, <laughs> she lost the battle. It's a pain in the neck. But it's really if those doors are broken. Well, thank you for saying something. I wouldn't honestly like I wouldn't. I can have Allison make some newer signs. Yeah, that are prettier. Those or a different are color. Bent. The other one's got a stash. Catch a dress in pink or something. Yeah. Right across the she top. loves doing that. There used to be smaller ones, like every two feet across the whole stage. Those are gone, but there's still two big ones in the ones that were walking. The little nail spikes on there? <laughs> That's what these are. Yeah, like the nail spikes. Just give my son a fun fact. He was chasing his brother around with the fun fact the other day. Look at him. Tacky feet. He will refer to the... Yeah, so we need it? help next Tuesday to guard the stage. Anybody please? <laughs> no, next Tuesday. It's the oh, whole district. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Which one do we want to start with? Which is the easier one to start with? The shorter one is the um, parent handbook. Okay, that's one we got. A lot of these, a lot of any of the any of the changes or, or discussions that we have with one should transfer over to the, to the other. So a lot of it is similar. Um, I, get, I think the easiest thing, honestly, is just to go page by page here. And if somebody's got something that they want to do or put in, just speak up. Does that sound good? So on the first page, you know, I think we're, we're assuming the rec director is going to come, but we're also, it would be bizarre of the board as well, I think, to, to can't 
probably director and the rec director are the same person. But we won't take it out because we're not going to know until we know what we got and what we're going to do until we see. But that we should have the flexibility of changing that as we find out what's happening. So yeah. that's all. Okay, so page two. Is there anything on there <coughs> that anybody has suggestions about? I, I just, I didn't have anything on that page. Nobody says anything. I'm just going to keep moving. Now, what I didn't do was go back and forth from what. You did on a table of contents, so I'm assuming it's just all together. <laughs> well, um, <coughs> I'm just going to um, <coughs> just say out loud that we should make sure that um, the the um, table of contents matches the content, because <laughs> I was looking for accommodations on page 16, but it's on 17. So I'm just throwing that out there. That this maybe should be after a, maybe after we make any changes yes, or additions, exactly. that, the very last that goes through that. Agreed, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So accommodations is 17. Well, just okay. to like make a note to make sure that you know, all. yeah, yeah, all yeah. the content matches the table of contents. <coughs> okay. So page four. I mean, the only thing we had to add in there, Siga, for me, was the the dates that I'm. That we voted in on was the June 29th date and um, ending on Friday, August 14th. No camp on July 3rd. That's all correct. I had nothing else. Anybody have anything else on that page? You guys are all good with the campers. Well, with the way the workers. Um, under early drop off, campers with assigned walking neighbors will stay oh. with them. Oh, yeah, there's a takeaway right there. There's other things. Yeah. Too. <laughs> I think I just cut these pieces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, right about to type off. Yep, it's funny, I missed both of those. I'm, I'm going out of order because I don't want to miss the opportunity to say it because I think it's important. On the very last page, 31, you're having both the camper and the parent guardian sign off on the code of conduct. Um, but I would change the parent guardian signature um, above where it says they reviewed the code of contact, conduct. I would have them sign off that they've read this whole policy instead of just the code of conduct. Uh, so I review the camper handbook? And, and you can say including the code of conduct, mm -hmm. but that they've read the whole parent handbook. Good point. Read or reviewed? Read and reviewed with my child. Yeah. Yes, there you go. I like that. And usually, what we've done in the past, Mike, I know you have your part of it, Kelly has, we have this printed out for them when they drop their kids off on the first day. So if they don't come with it, they can sign it there. But then again, have they really read and reviewed what's in here? I would just make clear that they need to provide it on the first day. And, you know, please make sure that you bring that with you, you know, in your checklist of how does the first day go. Yeah, we're going back to page five. Um, Sorry. There's a typo in the first paragraph. On page five? Yeah. Mine is empty. That's unfortunate for you. <laughs> really? I got a page five. When did you print it? 
What, what's oh, what's at the top geez. of page five? What it Camp location and facilities. Oh, that's on page, page six. six. So oh, that's why the table of contents. Uh, and that's why the table of contents. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know why that is. I'm on page five. Because uh, <laughs> there was a formatting issue, and then I went back and I fixed it. So the second uh, copy that came out okay, okay. is the more updated one. All right. So whatever page I'm on. Yeah. So it says something, um, families will be notified as soon as possible through in numerous ways. Okay. And then there was one more, too. Uh, Down at the bottom. Same, in the same section, yeah. actually, as you yeah. were, it says, there may be times when the school is not available. Oh, so no, hold on, never mind. Well, it, I guess it could, it's not necessarily a typo, I read it as a typo. Is it to us or you? Us as a okay. like I would get rid of through and say they will be notified as soon as possible in numerous ways and not say like but including and really mean whatever you're going to say. Get rid of through. Including. So I have a silly question. Yeah. What is the official name of the summer camp? Is it is Camp Raleigh or is it Camp Raleigh Summer Camp? Camp Raleigh is what we call it. Yeah. Because in numerous places it's referred to as Camp Raleigh Summer Camp with all the letters Raleigh. capitalized. So, so we should take out the should summer camp. camp Raleigh, mm -hmm. right? Should we just Camp yeah. Raleigh? Mm -hmm. you, you can see that. In, oh, I see that. So you can do a find and, and yeah. delete. Yeah. It's not a big issue, but. But it'll also take out a bunch of words that we don't need. Right. Save, mm -hmm. save each other. Yeah. Yeah. So the same yeah. sentence, Celia, you, is at the bottom of that page. In times of emergency evacuation, yep. so you can ch just change, cross out through numerous ways, including. Does anybody else have anything on that page? Um. So the camp that uh, uh, there's on the next page, I don't even know what that is, but um, there's a sample daily schedule. Um, can I just go back for a minute? Mm -hmm. um, which page? To section 1.4.2. <laughs> yeah, on the field. The shed. Like, why, why do parents and kids need to know anything about the shed? Oh, except maybe it's just off limits. that it's off limits. Okay. Sorry. All right. Okay. Should that be bolded, do you think? So that they know. Does it use anything else other than the shed is off limits? Yeah, that's yeah. what I would say is get rid of the first sentence and just off limits. Yeah, not enticing it with equipment supplies in there. Yeah, it's yeah. Off limits. yeah. yeah. If there's candy yeah. in there, you can't have it. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, okay with that. Whatever in page. I'm on page seven. I don't know what page you people are on. But <laughs> One point five point two at the top. Um, so I had a thing under one point six with field trips off site. Um, each child has the option of going on two field trips. I don't it, it's not really an option. It's right. part of camp. Yes. So um <coughs> There will be up to two field trips per week. There, there will be two field trips a week. Most weeks. Most weeks. Most weeks. Up to. You can just say up to. Yeah. Well, there might be more than that. If an emergency I, I don't happen. think you have to say how many. I would just say, you know, um, Each week there will be field offer. trips and children are expected to attend and make sure you have your liability waivers in beforehand. I don't think you have to say anything about how many. So each week we go on field trips. Yeah, and and I think you know the, the, the idea that you provide a schedule ahead of time is enough. Yeah. Camp. They can consult the schedule to find out how many there are this week. Field trips. Can we go back to one point four point two on the field? On the bathroom. Can we just change the second line? 
upon return from the toilets, I'd, I'd rather it say upon return from the bathrooms. I don't know, I just don't like it. Okay. <laughs> toilets. That Can was it just say all campers must um, ask a counselor before heading to the bathrooms and notify them of the return or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think it's enough to say return rather than from anywhere. Well, it's yeah, I just... It just does something if I don't like to, like, that British. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a, all campers must tell, ask or tell the council, you want to take it, you want to change that wording? I would say ask, yeah. like, tell me. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Or advise them that they have to take it or use a restroom or whatever. I mean, just make it just, like, simple, simple but polite. But this does seem to get confusing anytime you're using slashes in them. Like you're saying them. Just say you're ask. saying the same thing, but it's ask. You know, you're saying ask, tell, to upon return. Carry a slash and ensure they use the same things. Counselors must be told time. when students are coming to the bathroom. All campers must tell the counselors before heading to the bathroom and upon return. That's what I heard. Counselors may have to escort them to that area and then leave it there. Take that the escort that time. I don't know what our bathroom policy was or is. Um, I would for the last sentence under bathrooms, I would get rid of as well. Capitalized bathrooms and change can to may. Okay. Bathrooms may be utilized. Question Do you know? Does it still look like it? <laughs> well, and then they may not, you know, and then that gives some discretion to the counselors, too. and I did go over moving the refrigerator again so it's in the kindergarten room not in the staff room. But if we're going to have the staff room that's available wouldn't it be easy to leave it there? I don't know because if you're having kids using kindergarten and cell phone base and doing stuff in there and stuff maybe it would just be easier to have it there. Because in the past they've just left the door with the snacks in there they don't have to worry about getting it in and this past year they had to barricade off the area the refrigerator was in so the kids don't it's up to you guys. I just thought it was closer to the door. Something to consider. Um, it's not like anything is mine. No. <laughs> Celia, <laughs> under camp indoor spaces. Yeah. Um, what number? 1.4.3. On the first line, I would get rid of the, after the school, I would get rid of slash other groups. Okay. That was. And even just even with however. Okay. So. Just to try to get more concise. The school, that was because the Legion let us use their building. Um, I see. And we may not always have access to the school in case, but we had a year like this one. Then I would just say, I would just, you know, cross off the whole between the whoever and the groups. I would just cross the whole thing out and say, you know, any facility used by Camp Raleigh, blah, blah, blah. So. We expect campers to Because stay that goes for field trips, too. You don't want them, you know, misbehaving about property if on field trips either. So any field trip, any any facilities used. Mm -hmm. Start with groups graciously let us use their buildings slash buildings and grounds. So we expect campers to There's stay. There's no slashes. Buildings and grounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no slashes. Um, I don't want to get my so we expect campers to stay within designated areas and to treat the existing space. And, and I think you could even delete that whole thing and just say, you know, we expect campers to stay within designated areas and, you know, behave. I don't think you have to say any of the whole previous part, but that's, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's wordy. And as much as we can get concise, it, it decreases legal fees.
No, we already told you. Well, that it is. is. I need to talk to you about that. Then. <laughs> Back on seven. You guys keep going backwards on me. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> well, seven is the, the one schedule. You're probably so, on eight. Oh, sorry, can eight. we go up? Oh, when we talk about notifications, you mentioned it earlier. Like Facebook phone calls and signs, we change that to something yes. else, right? It's mentioned again in emergency shelter. So, whatever verbiage you yep. change it to before you change So, it we to took out the or however, yeah. or families will be. Notified as soon as possible in numerous ways, including Facebook phone calls and signage. Just says it's the same thing. Yeah, just make sure they're not. No, I, I put it on there, see above. <laughs> on the on 1.6 under field trips, it says see schedule above slash the registration packet for more information. What is the schedule above when they're talking about? That field was. That was on that was on this mic that this and that has all the it has field trips kind of listed. So you want to so take above off then. Yeah, you just want to take above off because you yeah, don't have not, not field it. trips. See schedule included in packet. <laughs> Will we have that in our packet? Did we have that in the? In the registration packet, we did. Yes. <coughs> and like here, it just says uh, we're just figuring out Mondays at this point. And we have to figure out six of them. It's actually five. <coughs> um, my vote was to. Uh, I'm on T-shirts. Okay. Let me catch up. With you. <laughs> um, can, we, can I can I back you up to the top of that page? I'm sorry. Um, okay, go ahead. Well, what page are you on? I'm on um, right above five point one point five point two, right before morning announcements. Yeah. Um, that two sentence thing there. Um, oh, theme weeks. Theme weeks and field trips are specified, cross out as part of and just in the registration pack. Um, and I would just, um, I would delete the second sentence and say something more like, um, the schedule is subject to change without notice. Yeah. It already says that, so we just take it out. Yeah. Okay. So we that sentence. Yeah. It's right at the bottom of the schedule. It's subject to And I would get rid of that whole two sentence thing then, mm -hmm. because there's no need for it. at the bottom of your, um, go back to the schedule, Kelly. Right okay. 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 Campers may rotate, is that the way you're saying it? it? Right below it, theme weeks and field trips are specified. Yeah. Um, They're saying take yeah. that out because we already say it's subject to change or depending on availability. Everything falls under Two. Well, no, we're in 5.2. Instead of having to say 1.5.2, you just say 5.2. More efficient. Um, yeah, yeah, coming out. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I like that. That's good. No, well, you know, I would want to add a two to just to make it so fun. We're about to say something. So, exactly. Mike, if we go back to the table of contents, shouldn't the camp part be one, and then a camper information be two, and policies and procedures be three? Oh, I like that. Yeah, I just noticed they were all ones. That's why. I like that. Because those are chapter two. That changes chapter three. things. I like that, Celia. And then it highlights the because we folded out the three different sections. Yeah. There we go. Good idea. So we just changed that all up. Still good. And then it then we don't have like the page five. I'm past page five. <laughs> I'm not going back to page five anymore. Is that your five? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my vote was the t shirts were going to be $8 this year. Just because. 
What were they before? Seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> Six. <laughs> yes. So we'll go up a buck. So what pinch is there? Oh, right there. One point six. six. T-shirts. One shirt per family included. And return it. It should be, if you don't have it, then you you have to buy yeah, one. That's or don't have on the practice that day. I mean Four point five. It's one point two. Yeah, I just think it will be like three point two. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
stop trying to get that idea. Okay. All right. So, wait. Your where? shirt policy is on what page? I'm, um, on, the wa I'm on the walker I, policy. I have 25. 25. Oh, okay. the beginning okay. of the back yeah. area. Okay. Um, so, so, so the whole thing, it starts out with di distribution. Um, I, I don't think you should suggest that you're going to get them to them prior to the first day of camp unless you really know how that's happening. We've, we've done in the past and meet the counselor. Well, so, so I'm going to suggest that you really have that event and say that that can, you know, it will happen on that specific, you know, at the meet the counselors or on the first day or, or that you don't open it up to prior because you, that opens up questions about mm -hmm. how, what that looks like. Shirts will be given to campers at meet the counselors or the first day of camp. Meet the counselor event. And it does say each family receives one, so each they have two kids. Each one? You have family to buy extra. One? Yes. yes. Sure. Okay. That is true. So only one of your kids would get one, okay. and then you'd have to. Well, may I ask why you came up with that? Because oh, I would be really annoyed if I had three kids and I paid for registration for everybody and I got one. Shirt. But we only have one registration fee, so this will bring us all back to if you want to be like I the think worst you and you have so a that it really thirty dollars registration fee for one kid, twenty five dollars registration fee for a second kid. Twenty dollar registration fee for the third kid. I mean, that's that's what other camps do. We've done it this way because you get a one shirt because the majority of our campers are single kids. So that's Except why we did it. <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> so if you have a second or a third kid, you're not being charged more okay. registration money, so but just charged for a teacher. Okay. Your, your registration okay. form does it have a, like? Why, yes. why wouldn't it has a spot for yes. t-shirts? Yeah. So why wouldn't you just not include any shirts then? If the t-shirts always look the same, maybe people would prefer to have a discount of that much money because they already have shirts from last year. That's a sweet and then on the form <laughs> it says, you know, you pick the quantity. I want three shirts times however much money, and you f like do the fill out the form on your own and decide that I need to pay twenty four extra dollars for t-shirts or something, and that way. You know, they, they, they're more aware of it when they're registering it, that t-shirts are not included and that you're paying extra per t-shirt. I'm just throwing that out there mm -hmm. because I think the idea of one t-shirt for three kids is, even though it's not a lot of families, maybe. Um, yeah, it's not a lot of families. It's, but I think if... It's just annoying. We, you know, we, every, child should get, every child should get a free t-shirt. Like, I agree. And so not, you're going to either absorb the, the cost. Gonna, right. But there's no cost because we get to, they give them free. Well, that's what I'm saying. So that I mean, like we absorb the cost and yeah. they just get t-shirts. Yeah. Or each else they have to order. Shirt. Each kid gets one shirt. I, I not, fully agree. You know. And they can wash it every night. And I don't think you have to change the scheme of how you reduce it for additional kids either because the shirts are already covered. So. Right. But we always it's tend to put the money out ahead of time and then from our budget. And then it comes back in. Like we didn't get our money until late in the year, so and we've already paid for that. Work, so. Are you and talking about like speaking. gift money for for buying T-shirts? I wouldn't worry about that. I think you have to. I think you have to budget for what you actually need, and then you're asking for money to help support generic camp, and it you know so that you're not tied in that way to not having enough money for something that you've obligated. Especially if we're talking about increasing the, the camp prices this year, too. Yeah, then just that make it every kid gets a shirt. Anyway. Every kid gets a shirt, regardless of the registration. Yeah. One shirt. Any Anything above and that then, is on the form. But I would still provide on the form that you can, you know, make it clear, and then yes. on the form you can order additional extra. Shirts, mm -hmm. Additional shirts may be purchased for right. $8 a shirt, mm -hmm. unless you want adult size that is 10 So... But if the registration form kind of lays all that out, then you can sort of fill it out yourself and determine how much extra money you have to provide. Mm -hmm. Kelly wants to know since we're talking money. Do we so need to make a motion on this that all t-shirts are included in registration? And one per student. One per person. Okay. Camper. One per camper. 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 So that could be changed on the shirt. That's fine. And, and
and then a field trip days you will be charged and I, I don't think they then you don't make a borrow option you'll be charged an extra eight dollars if you forget your shirt oh, and you own it use. and you own it yeah. right or you just don't let them go be here yeah, yeah. so they their choice yeah you can call to have pick up or you come back they can or come bring a t-shirt today. or whatever they can but sit a special every day for half the day so they can read a book well we're not having a payback option so either they have right. to have to sit go home <laughs> And I was, I missed something. So. I think it, and your initials were spelled incorrectly. Oh. Okay. Okay. Child's name or initials. Okay. So. Name. At least your last name. Okay. <laughs> Too many kids with the same initial. So we're clear on the t-shirts, right? That mm. it's all going to be... Did you get I really could it? use this when I had all five of my <laughs> children in <laughs> camp, you know. This would have been great a so few years ago. Is this a suggestion or a motion? That the it doesn't have to be a motion. I don't think we're, it has to be a motion. We're trying to get this book to be, you don't need a motion. I think, you know, at the end, you know, once you have a revised draft, everybody can approve the approve revised it, but draft. Yeah, but I um, think. So every student gets a t one t-shirt per camper. Additional shirts may be purchased at. Right. And there's no borrowing. Just delete anything. Yeah, delete any reference to borrowing. And then somewhere it needs to say no no camper is allowed on a field trip without a shirt. Without, without a Camp Raleigh, Raleigh shirt. shirt. Right. <laughs> it right. says wearing requirements under shirt policy. Campers and staff must wear their shirt on field trip day. But then it, yeah, and then it does say options offer to parents later on. You can buy a shirt. Or So, so number two down yeah, there so just I would gets say walked stay across home. to number two is stay home. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll go. Okay. Take your health care. Not really lost about where, where we are. Okay. Okay. What number? What number were we? <laughs> I see we could go on from 25. We're almost at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, So seven, yeah. So, so Celia, you've been so the feet. Have the wash. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Within forty-eight hours, or something like that. And then no borrowing. We said not prior to camp. Uh, we're going to change prior to camp to the meet the counselor then. And we're taking out borrowing, right? Yes. Because they have to purchase it, and you're taking out. You will be buying out. one for eight dollars if you use your local code. Okay. This fee must be paid within forty hours. <coughs> okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can just um, field trip refunds. I would just say um, there are no refunds. as well that comes after that. But it's not your registration fee, it's your tuition fee. Yeah. It's not your registration fee. Yes, sure. yes, so tuition fee 
and just cross out as well. And put a period at the end of the piece. Right. Yep. Anybody have anything on this? I just like when we start getting into like the vision statement and mission statement, especially in the uh, the other manual. Like this first sentence is just a complete like there's too many hands and it just run on. Like Camp Raleigh is here to provide enrich enriching and rewarding experiences to our campers, as well as nurture positive interaction between the camper and the counselors. So just having that extra hand communication. I get what you're trying to do, you're trying to add more to the sentence, but it's just, you get these hands and hands and hands on hands, and then it's just like, well, you didn't add anything else over there, you just, you already said interaction or communication, either one, you know, whichever one you want to leave in there. It just makes um, it read easier for, for people if they're going towards one or another. This was something I took from another camp um, manual to, um, and close the gap that um, of getting campers that may not be, they may not have the capability to address. There are some kids that have assistance at school, but they'll come to camp with the same level of assistance. Mm -hmm. And then they have struggles throughout camp. And it can, it can be a liability to them or to themselves or to others at camp. If that makes This first sentence. You mean the 1.7 one? No, I'm just saying the very first sentence. Oh. Camper, Camp Raleigh is here to provide enriching and rewarding experience to our campers. As well as nurture positive, whatever word you want to keep, between the camper and the counselor. Positive communication. Communication. Positive interaction. Yeah. Well, I think interaction covers. Communication. Yeah. yeah. I'm just reading this out like, you know, as you read the run on sentences, in my, like, I stop reading. Yeah. So, so what if it's a, Camp Raleigh is here to provide enriching and rewarding experiences to the campers? Uh, period. And then capital N. Nurture positive interactions between, uh, for everyone involved in the camp. Or just for everyone involved, you don't need in the camp. Um, under camper expectations, the first sentence, I would get rid of the it at the very end. And it says Camp Raleigh offers a fun-filled days. So it has to be. Yeah, get rid of a. a. Do you like that paragraph in general? I think um, it's no, I, I don't. I, don't. Yeah, I, think I'm, I, I don't. I'm having a really hard time with that. Um, I am too, and I don't really have a response for it, <coughs> um, because it's not about the best experience, camp experience possible, it's really about, you know, be careful what you're saying, because you can't turn people away, so, you know, you, it's not about the camp experience, it's about our ability to accommodate that, but we don't have a choice, if we, you know, if there's a camper, we can't say, sorry, we can't accommodate that. You know, if you have a camper that needs a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, somebody, then you've got to provide the one-on-one -on -one somebody. Do we have to have that section at all? And then just go down to what we expect from them? Well, that's uh, what that's I'm thinking is that it's, it's not... I... My intention here was to let families know that we may not be the best fit for their child. There may be more specialized camps out there that would be better for their child. 
when we've had diabetes, children come in the past. And there might, and I know there's specialized camps out there for children with diabetes. I think so what's the solution, that? though? What, what do you think? I think people know that they choose us because we're local and, the, and, and it's the community and it's not very expensive. I think people know that there are specialty camps. I don't think it's our job to tell them that. I think right. it's our job to say that this is what the camp is. Right. The intent of the manual is to cover liability, right? I mean, yes. Give them information and cover liability. So. And somewhere, I, somewhere there must be a counselor to um, camper ratio. Yes. So that should tell the parent right there that my kid's not going to get a one-on-one -on -one counselor. Mm -hmm. I'm going, my kid is going to be in a group of... I think that's a better way to say it. Yeah, I, or at I, least I have, that. have a real problem with that. I, I, I don't know how to resolve it, but I don't, involved, involved, I don't, I don't like it. I would like to leave 1.7 altogether. You don't want somebody to say we're discriminating. Right. Well, Except I think this is exactly what it's saying. In, implying in, in, anyway. In, in yeah. implying. Um, and, I, and I think it's important to say what you're saying about sunscreen somewhere, but just know that if a kid needs help with that, you know, you you've got some them. really little kids, you've got to help them. Mm -hmm. So well, it's on a, there's a permission slip for that. Yeah. When I was around, they were very good with that. So you want to remove these bold sections. I'm just saying one of the code of conducts that I found was that the camp directors and us as a committee will acknowledge our limitations and accept that there are some campers we can't accommodate and help them find the appropriate But I don't think we can't. It's that. not our job to it's find at that. And, it's, and, and if somebody comes and needs accommodations, we have to meet them. That's the challenge of all this. I would get rid of the 1.7.1 also because you have your code of conduct. You don't need to reference it again. You have it once. I would just leave it be where it is. And if somebody, if a camper came to the committee or the um, select board or Caroline and said, look, this is my kids' needs, can they attend? Because you, for most kids, you're going to know that your kid needs, has needs. And if they are a, if they are a grade school student, sometimes that can be part of the school's accommodations for them, if they feel that that is necessary. Um, but I don't think we can say that without somebody without the parent asking first. Well, but if the parent asked you for advice, you could say, "We have counselors for a group of ten kids." Yes, that's it. But but if uh, I'm so. I think it's great to put the you know the ratio out there, for example, and that might deter people who might need a better ratio than that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a kid in a wheelchair that, you know, even if they're from out of town, because you're open to accepting people yep. from out of town, or maybe they're new to the school district, um, or maybe they live in town and just don't attend our school, mm -hmm. you know, that could require special busing. Um, you have to prove that that's a hardship to the town. Whatever it is that they need as an accommodation, you have to prove that that's a hardship. Um, and if you don't provide it, you're opening yourself up to some kind of liability. You that's can't. Special. It is. It's ADA. You can't just say that we are, you know, We're this is it, and we can't accommodate anything else. You can't do that. So my, I am willing to get rid of most of this. There are a couple of things that go up in my head. One is that I. Kelly had talked to Summersworth and to Barrington during the summer about different things, and they had talked about that they they're contacting families to ask them for more information. Now the last sentence of this first paragraph under camper expectations: We review all applications and will contact families for more information if there are any concerns. Can we read that? I think you can. Um I, I would, how can you, how can you I think know this is the question for, for an attorney because yes. you, you, you don't want them putting it on an application and then you just say, oh, we can't accept that based on you know what you have on this application right. or, or you're asking them leading questions, which is, you know, I, I think like maybe put in, in bold all caps in that section what you want to do and, and say and with a little question mark, can, can we have 
disappear or something like that. But, you know, really ultimately I think people fill out an application, they show up on the first day, and you have to accommodate whatever that is. And yet, how do you know how to accommodate it when you don't really know what it is, to what extent, and how expensive? So, you know. Are you allowed to put on the application, does your student have any um, medical or social needs that we need to be aware of, such as EpiPens and... That's already on I, I think something like that is, is fine. But I would caution you about follow-up phone calls right. and finding out more that's going to lead you to Asking a discrimination. Asking for discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think. But can this you is say cute. medical social, or social? I would well, put it, it would in be there. Something we would put it in there, and, and, the, and the lawyer gonna, would tell us yes, that, whether or not. That, that's what I would do. Yeah, Because I would, I would, there's always going to be the one that's not going to tell you. True. And you're going <laughs> to deal with that, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. But if they sign off that there's nothing. It, it, they know. can say they can misrepresent the situation, right. and you still have to take it, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't tell us something about their child that is documented. Well, what do you mean documented? A any, like it could be like- An could, official diagnosis? Yeah. Mean? And well, they didn't tell us, and well, something happened to the kid or the kid did something, then that's not completely our responsibility I don't either. disagree. And then, you know, the insurance company would work that out for yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would, it wouldn't, I mean, we wouldn't have but, to- But once we're aware of would. something, and through yes. an interaction with a parent that said, this happened at camp today, mm -hmm. you know, that, that could, you know, that could lead to something that's, that better not be discriminatory, you yeah. know, but, yeah, but absolutely. you know, it could potentially be a conversation that leads to more information that can provide better care, perhaps, mm -hmm. but if something happens because you're not aware of a situation, um, I, I wouldn't say that's probably our fault. You, you operate within, you, you know, your due diligence with, you know, with the information you have at the time, and insurance would handle Take that. Yeah. So I think this document, all our documents have to just, um, you know, put forward our best intentions and legal will tell us mm -hmm. how we have to revise. So do we want, we can't, <coughs> just so I'm getting clarification, because we sort of weaved our way around here. <coughs> we cannot keep, let me will review and contact families. Yeah. No. 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 My, I know you guys want to get rid of the, uh, the next section too, and I completely get getting rid of the in general code of contact and all of those bullet points, but starting at check-in, that is in the employee manual of what we're expecting of campers, but we're not putting it out there That's fine. to include for campers at check-in, this is what we expect of you. I think that could be the new 2.1. Yeah. Start at, um, at check-in. And I think you should also have in there, blah, 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 and then um, remember, if we're going on a field trip, you must have your shirt. Yes, I think that's, that's in there somewhere. A few of them. Actually, so on the next page. Yeah, on the next page. In bold letters. It's the last one on there. Yeah, <coughs> it should be a check-in too. Yeah, I think so too. Just at check-in. Well, or maybe just say if campers do not have their shirts, they will not be checked in. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe under on field trip instead of saying wear your camp shirt, say camp shirt is mandatory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Camp shirts are mandatory for all field trips. On field trip. So you were saying at check-in on field trip day. Mandatory, or they won't be checked in. And you'll have to come back and get them. Yeah, they can't, you know, depending on field trip, whatever. field trips. T-shirts are mandatory. The yes. same wording? Yeah, field trips are mandatory. Mm -hmm. You 
not say permission because that's part of the tuition, right? It says do not get on the bus unless you have permission. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Um, <laughs> um, but the on field trips, I would just, the second bullet, I would just say follow bus rules and get rid of the wall on it. Why do we have it in bold and, and, and um, caps on no uh, sharing food? And do not share your food with anyone. What is because of allergies? Food allergies. Um, because some kids have severe nut allergies or severe allergies where they can go into anaphylactic shock. And put due to con allergy concerns or something. Do that. To me, it sounds like it's just you know. I think because he was kid sitting next to me, he didn't bring his lunch and not right. being able to give you something. So put in there due to food allergies. There's no sharing of food, you know. Well, and I think as make long it as you obvious why you're doing it. This sounds just rude to me. I don't know. Why. <laughs> like, you know, as a long as they, like the counselors know. You know what I mean? Like if, if the counselors know that okay, Lucy didn't bring her lunch today, mm -hmm. but she can have some of Chad's. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, they don't I mean about it, that. Yeah, it doesn't it's say just, why you're saying no food sharing. It but there's also you know, in school we do that a lot because there are parents who. Monitor what their kids eat, mm -hmm. or or are like checking for certain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so we just we rail. I mean, five six. We don't. We're not crazy about that. But mm -hmm. I know in some of the younger grades, mm -hmm. they are. So even in school, it's not just food. Yeah. So we you could say something like, due to allergies, please limit. Well, I was just checking, and I was. Um, I had thought in somewhere where I said. Um, that in my mind somewhere in here it said that they, unless they're told to share food. Like, I thought about a kid that doesn't show up with their lunch. Mm -hmm. And, like, a counselor could say, do you want to share with such and such a friend? And then they could. Mm -hmm. oh, please check with a counselor to see yes. if it's okay to share food. Yeah. Right. The no, the no sharing food is something that came from our employee manual, not mm. something I had it. Yeah, no, I just, it, it just, it, this is like a reason why not to, you know, especially if it's someone who doesn't have anything, Due you to know. food allergies, food always food check with a counselor before, before sharing, sharing food. Before Perfect. Sharing food. That, I would be okay with that. Because if they have food allergies, I would imagine that we would ask that, you know. So do the food allergies, yeah. no sharing? Please or check with the check counselor, with counselor before, sharing. before sharing. Well, yeah, and it does make, then you get to the point where the other reason I think a lot of times they don't want sharing is because somebody can try to coerce the kid into giving them their, you know, Doritos or cupcake when that's not what they had in their lunch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... Again, if you're checking with the counselor, then the counselor can be like, no, you have one. You eat your own. Yeah. And yeah. like Lori was referring to at school, some of the younger kids have their lunch checked or whatever. And a couple of parents, when they sign their kids in, say, here's $20 for pizza only. I don't want them getting snack shack. Or here is $20 just for snack shack. I don't want them getting pizza. I provide their lunch. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we have to respect that. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just think that there needed to be a reason why not to share. That's and it all. should, and they should know to check with the counselor. So you know, mm -hmm. like you said, if somebody's hungry, or you know, I had a kid in school one year who came to me and said, "Can I eat this?" And the whole bottom of their sandwich was moldy. <laughs> you know, and it, no, yeah, and you know, and I'm like, no, you don't eat that. Go, go to the cafeteria and they'll give you something. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Or were you the one that told me about when Chad? Sandwich when I was away, and his cheese and his bread still had plastic wrap on it. <laughs> no, but <laughs> oh yeah, I was but like, there was a one time one. years ago. <laughs> I think you were away, and he didn't have a lunch. Oh uh -huh, yeah, I'm not And Jill Boot went home and made him lunch. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, that was small school. Could be like my kids school. goes to school and can't find the lunch lady. Went to get breakfast and ended up. Walking through the cafe to the lunchroom, couldn't find the lunch lady, so walked out, went back to class, told him he had lunch or breakfast. <laughs> and then when they went to get lunch, she found, the teacher found out he never ate. Mm -hmm. yep. So I have a, I just wanted to change. It says during active gym games, organize sports, encourage others. And I, I crossed out 
the word attempt and just wait, challenge yourself to participate in all activities. Um, we go back to when you need to use the restroom slash water breaks. Number one and two seem a little bit um, redundant, or I'm not really yep. sure why we say both of those things. It should be the same thing as the other one was. Why do you say in two different places? This is a pop and I don't want to go back to page five. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> said it on page five. Mm -hmm. so why do we need on page five and on page five? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. Just so. delete it. But the, yeah, the first two. Yeah. The or delete from page five, one or the other. I would take yeah. it off page five because page five, is, yeah, you're talking about the camp. Right. All you're trying to say is, hey, the restrooms are here. Yeah, but you I could just write that for a bathroom located inside the I mean, school. Always ask to use the bathroom. Always check with the staff if the kids can to use the bathroom. But I mean, it's, it's saying the same thing. I think it just should be always ask to use the bathroom or get a drink. Or leave the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I never asked you to like a water bubbler, too. But, oh, like the um, one in the gym's not working. Yeah, yeah it hasn't been working for a long time. Yes. I don't know why. Yeah, I'll ask. I'm going to ask. So, yeah, take them to stuff. Not no. to spend on a facility we don't that's have not ours. Really? <laughs> water bubbler? Has to be some wine somewhere. So, um. It's a water fountain. Not a bubble. What? <laughs> Always ask to use the bathroom and get a drink. Or leave the area. Always check in with the staff. Before, no, was, I mean, just check in with the staff if somebody has to be going to the bathroom after. or getting a drink. Before and after getting a drink, drink leaving the area, or yeah. go to the restroom. Yeah. 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 Are we on page nine? yeah, we are on 10. Hmm? We're R9. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> before we get to the camper code of conduct, I think should probably go in the code of conduct. Like, you know, telling, you know, counselors that you need to leave the area would be, like, would be part of conduct, I would say. Um, and being quiet. Um, so I, I don't want to go through it, you know, bit by bit, but I just want to put it out there that I think some of it could get moved over. Um, I think some of it is in there. In which case it can just be deleted so it's not in two places. Um, I, this, the first list was what was in the staff manual, what we were expecting of the campers. And it wasn't anywhere written for the campers, so I just copied and pasted it from one place to the next. That's my rationale. Well, but it's great to have it in there, I, I, you know. Um, what is your expectation of stop time tonight? Yeah, it's getting... Can I get a pee? Go. Is that well, on film? Let me know when you have to, Yes, it is. <laughs> um, let's what have was a stop I mean, time? 10 minutes? Can you get 10 minutes in yet? Yes. Oh yeah, it's about, I just, it's, yeah, that's fine with me. This is a little, my feet are cold too. Is it, it cold it, in here? Yes. It's not heated <laughs> in here. Well, it's not heated in oh. here, so the thing kicking in and blowing is doing nothing. Oh, oh. is that why? It's also not insulated. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk to that board of selectmen. <sighs> are we we under? What are we under? We're uh, right under the camper code of conduct. Yeah. All right. So, and I don't, I don't know how. Um, camper code of conduct, and this is. So I like some of these blurbs. What I, what I would like to see with this camper code of conduct is. Kind of like what happens at the grade schools. That I feel like there should be, five or six things, that kids as young as six understand and as old as whatever we are, 13, and, and that it 
So I kind of I kind of looked at this code of conduct, Celia, because I think this should be a part. Of, like if we can put it on a poster, and kids can recite it. Like so, I grabbed, um, and maybe we can even cut down on some of these things with this code. But like I took the part, the two pages that you put, and I wrote, um, "Be respectful, be responsible." Be positive, be safe, be a good friend. Those, those were mm -hmm. like my five or, or whatever that I um, I picked out of that. Mm -hmm. And that that's something our campers can understand as young as six and as old as whatever. And, and, then, and like you and I talked about with the school pillars. Yeah. That I mean, most of our kids are volunteer kids anyway. Mm -hmm. And those are all references to the pillars and they know that. Yeah, and I took I took um, I looked at Woodman Park School for something, and like they had four things. It was like be safe, be caring, be respectful, be here and ready, and that was more for school. Um, the works had something that I really liked too, but it was healthy minds, healthy bodies, healthy futures. So I, I think that's kind of what I would like to see, like. Um, just to just to have because I would love to put that on a big you know poster board like here's our code of conduct we talk about talking about it like for and we can still leave all this stuff in here but I think it's really important that we have certain points that people get even at six the kids need to know what's expected of them, yes. not just parents Right. I'd like yeah. that idea that you can put it on a poster, but maybe reformat the camper con code of conduct so that under respect it has all of those, what does that look like, all the Absolutely. things that that means, and under safety, what are all the things that that means? So there are... And that's what I kind of tried to snag. I so looked at what you had. There are yeah. six points here, and maybe the eating one falls off. Um, or eating can be part of, you know... Um, Safety. Or being a good friend. Like, yeah, I mean, it could go under wherever it goes under. And there it is, Denise. You, I said I put it in here. Um, number one under eating. Eat their meals, provide the snacks, but just given by staff. If that w I figured if that way somebody forgot their meal, they could get it. But, I mean, and maybe we just say um, the camper code of conduct is, like you said, the six points. Here is what we expect from each point. Yeah. That's what I, and I actually have a, I, I found in the section I wrote, be active in that too, because there is stuff about activities and, and, and being a part of activities. I think that was the, the camper should show that they are committed by, um, and that was a lot of that being positive and um, participating so, in new activities and stuff, so maybe that can be, you know, instead of being, being physically active or being, being active instead of yeah. being Or maybe committed. something like engage. Engage in activities, engage in a conversation, you know. Right, yeah. And I try not, I think the biggest, the, the, the one that has the most points is um, safety. Seven. But I try to keep them as small as possible. And maybe. It's important to have that the whole thing about weapons, drugs, and right. blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's going to be... So, uh, because if you think about conduct, that's how you want them to conduct themselves. 
Safety is everything with kids. Right. You know, it's not just how the student acts, it's everything else. I mean, one of those points is be safe. program and have like it, like two or three in different locations with the same message and I will personally take care of that. Oh, you know, go ahead and write, I think that's an excellent idea, that's why I think this is it's really important. It's, to have it be if, bold you, and if you if you list them, I can give them to Allison and she can make it pretty. Not fancy. Yeah, I'm gonna buy banners. No, no, I know. No, she'll, do I the design work. she'll do the design. Yeah, she yeah, loves yeah, doing yeah. that. I know she but I'm gonna so buy it on a, at a printing place. But she might, you, you can pick, like, upload yeah. graphics and stuff. Oh, you can? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. No, okay, she I'm just thinking, then we'll have them year after year after year, and then we won't have to... It doesn't have to be fancy, but she can just do, like, the lettering for you and stuff, okay. and then you can just say, scan it in and yep. say, this is what we want. Yeah, yeah. Because that way we'll have them after the year and not have to worry about doing that again, because I don't think our focal point is going to be any different than that <laughs> year after CEO. year. So. <laughs> I think we should do that. And Kelly, are you going to be able to share those with me. Yep. So, Kelly, if you share them with me, I'll have Allison set it up for Denise, and then I'll send it to you. Okay. Does anybody have a thing, any, I mean, do they want to change anything? Or I, I mean, I was like, be respectful, be responsible, be active, be positive, be safe, be a good friend. I think stay safe. active is good. Stay active. You like stay active? Changing my it rounds it up, though. It's like <laughs> I know. I do I kind of like all the bees. I, I was picturing like, well, have it be the last <laughs> You, you're messing things up there. Um, you're switching that. What if we just put a slash? <laughs> <laughs> no? Come on, fit it right in there. <laughs> so it's be respectful, be responsible, okay. be safe, be kind, be fair. We Whatever could use be kind instead of be a good friend. I don't, you know, one of those. Be responsible. Be that's, what, that's what our rules used to be on the playground when kids were here. Be safe, be kind, be fair.
think it's it. nine. Well, <laughs> do we have a second? Or by consensus? I think consensus. Consensus, consensus, consensus says it's time to go home. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I think six o'clock is fine. If we want to look at, at our next two meetings, just to be like, we can make those six, if that's fine with me. Is that good with everybody else here? Yes. Okay. All right. So the next meeting, um, Denise and Karen are going to be um, TBD. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will clear it with the library to make sure that we can go there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll take so that and, and let you guys and know not that. Let me know because we can go. I can go to school. You just might have to fill out a form. Okay.